Hello and welcome to our worship today. You join me in St Mary's Little Birch. It's a bit of a chilly day when I'm recording this, so um, if you do see clouds of steam um, from my breath, then you know why. But welcome to our service today. We're celebrating slightly early the Feast of Epiphany for Sunday the 3rd of January 2021. And so may I also wish you um, a Happy New Year. Um, We're just hopeful that 2021 is going to be better than 2020 in lots of ways, aren't we? The Feast of the Epiphany marks the um, arrival of the Magi, the uh, Three Kings, um, as they're often called. Um, And so our theme of of our service today picks up on that. Let's begin our worship then. Our opening responses. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You lay the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assume the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our opening Epiphany hymn for today is As With Gladness Men of Old, words by William Chatterton Dix and the tune is also called Dix, written by Conrad Cocker in the um, uh, early 1800s. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold. First reading then today is taken from the prophet Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then there you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense 
and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is one that's um, well known and probably loved of primary schools, but seems to fit um, our theme today. It is, of course, uh, We Three Kings, words by and music by John Hopkins. Um, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar. And so to our second reading, which comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Our Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is taken from the second chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. 
When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When you uh, think about the service today, you might wonder, uh, what are we doing still having the Advent candles lit? Um, surely we've um, finished that. Well, of course, actually we haven't, because the season of Christmas um, extends to Epiphany. And in some cultures, Epiphany is known as the Little Christmas, um, and particularly in um, uh, Ireland. Um, and other Catholic churches, it's uh, Catholic countries, it's celebrated much more than it is in England, in the Church of England. Um, and which is a shame, I think, because it marks a significant and important part in the story of the birth of Jesus. Because, you know, we've celebrated Mary and Joseph's journey and the arrival at the inn, and there's a whole debate about that, but we won't go there at the moment, and the uh, shepherds on the hillside and all of that. Um, and actually, of course, the king must tend to get a little bit forgotten because often the 6th of January, which is the actual date of the Epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas, is very much back into our normal lives. Uh, although obviously 2020 and 2021 are slightly different in terms of what our normal lives look like. Um, it does tend to get a bit kind of swept to one side. Um, and of course, actually, that we in the church don't help by bringing the, the uh, celebration of Epiphany forward, um, in this case three days, to the Sunday before. But that, that's not, neither here nor there. It's really nice to have our Advent candle rings because it reminds us that actually we are still part of that story. We remember the prophets and John the Baptists and patriarchs and Mary and all of those things. We've thought about Jesus on Christmas Day arriving in that stable being born into our world, and now we think of the honour that is being given to him by these magi, these astronomers, kind of stroke magicians, stroke philosophers from the East. And I think there are a couple of things that, that are important. One of the things that's important is that when we chose that, when, when the, the people who put the lectionary together chose the reading from Isaiah, they did so with a, a, a kind of definite point, which is that Christ comes not just to Jews, but to Gentiles as well, to the whole world. And that is made clear um, in our reading from Isaiah. Um, Arise, shine for your light has come, etc. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Um, your daughters, uh, sons from, come from afar and your daughters carried on the arm. Um, you know, all those ideas of the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels and, and will cover the land and so on and so forth. All of those great and wonderful kind of uh, images that are uh, encapsulated in Isaiah are there to remind us then that actually what's happening is that we are recognising that Jesus is king of the world, king of our world. And that's quite a radical concept. It's one of the reasons why Christians were um, not very well liked, <laughs> shall I put it that way, by the Roman Empire 
because, of course, they swore allegiance not to Caesar, but to God. And, and actually, you know, the Romans were, were quite pragmatic. They said, you know, yeah, you can keep your gods. We don't mind you keeping your gods. You know, we've got our Roman gods, um, you know, Mars, God of War, and all of those kind of things, um, and Jupiter and things. We've got our, we've got our gods. Um, but actually, I don't, we don't mind you having your own gods as long as you swear obedience to Caesar, um, to the Roman state. And this was where it came into contact with early Christians and, and the story, for example, of St. Alban, um, you know, who was a, 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 a soldier in the, in the army and, you know, ended up uh, being martyred because he, would refu- he refused to release the name of the, the priest who had converted him because he was so convinced that it was right. Or St. George, some of the stories about St. George being a soldier in, in the Roman army and then having to sort of actually give up his... Uh, his uh, that calling, that side of his life, because he became a follower of Jesus. So that's kind of a very interesting one. And these three uh, magi, these three people who appear from nowhere, um, just the east, and come having spotted a star, so we know they're star watchers, astronomers, uh, we'd probably also link it with that astrology at the time, because there was quite a lot of kind of um, mystery religions about you know, how the stars influenced your life and work and so on and so forth, all of those things. So these three kings come from the east, and they come like an, almost like an official delegation, and they turn up in Herod's palace saying, excuse me, we've come to honour the king. And of course, Herod gets all very twitchy about all of this because what that means is it's a a potential usurper of the throne that he has fought for, hung on to, killed some of his family (laughs) to remain in position of of, of authority and all of those kind of things. So there's no doubt that he is worried along with all of Jerusalem because, of course, like a lot of, um, uh, of despots, the people surrounding him are yes men, and in surrounding him, of course, they're all vying for position in his own court, trying to keep their own kind of uh, political and, and financial hopes alive. So this thought of somebody else who's coming along to challenge that is a real worry. So we go on from there, and we think a little bit about what else is happening which is that these three kings, these three magi, um, um, and actually, of course, we don't know the exact number. It doesn't say in the text how many they are. They're just the three gifts, so we assume there's three of them. These magi bring gifts which mark out what Jesus will be. The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh each have a significance that is important to Matthew's hearers. Okay? Um, And again, we're thinking, you know, reminding ourselves that he's writing for a very different culture in which these things actually mean something different. And so we're sort of inferring from that that the gold is is kind of, you know, for power and authority, uh, the the frankincense is for worship and the myrrh is for his death. Those gifts that are given are given symbolically as well. They have extra meaning attached to them. They're not just, oh, <laughs> you know, oh, by the way, here's a teething ring, which you might need later. These are, these are gifts which are deliberately given to mark out who Jesus is. And that becomes a challenge for us, doesn't it? So how do we respond to Jesus being king of the world? How do we respond to this idea that actually all of, all of the world belongs to God? And I think one of the ways in which we have to respond is to say, well, we try and, in our dealings, be Christ-like, fair and just and righteous, and not underhand and sneaky and all of those kind of things. Because actually those mark out for us, don't they, the, the two contrasts, if you like. The way the world works, the Machiavellian kind of intrigue, the kind of plotting and politicking and and kind of what's in it for me against this different view of the world, against God's view of the world, of righteousness, of community, of understanding, of comprehension, of sharing. 
And there's a big battle between the two. And Matthew nails his colours to the mast here. And challenges us to do also. Where, uh, where are our priorities? As we think about 2021 and we set our New Year's resolutions, and, and you might already have broken them, I don't know, depending on how good you are at keeping them. What do we want to see changed for the better in us, in our families, in our community? And how does that reflect God's kingdom values of justice and fairness in the world? And if we're not, if those are not aligned, then I think that's a, it's, it's a challenge to our faith, isn't it? How do we align those things? And that might mean making some unpopular decisions. So some people have decided, for example, that because of uh, the greenhouse gas emissions of planes, they will not fly anywhere. Um, and that's a really interesting position to take, isn't it? Uh, you know, because actually what they're offering and saying is, oh, this world is important, and I might only be a small part of it, but I can make a difference in what I do, because I don't think it's right to fly. So the question then comes, what is it right for us to do? And that's not an easy, there's no easy, simple answers, and there's no easy, simple set of ways we can live by in a complex world, other than we can try and be like Jesus, to be fair and just and righteous in our dealings with one another and with the, our, our world. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our third Epiphany hymn for today, Brightest and best are the stars of the stars of the morning, dawn in our darkness, and lend us thine aid. Words by Reginald Heber, and the music is Epiphany, the hymn tune Epiphany by F.J. Thrupp. Brightest and best of the stars of the morning. We come to our prayers. As we begin this new year, 2021, we reflect on what has happened in 2020 and the changes that have happened in our lives, perhaps the challenges too that we've faced, the difficulties in finding work or retaining work, perhaps the challenges of looking after children at home or worried about family we couldn't see.
to our prayers. As we begin this new year, 2021, we reflect on what has happened in 2020 and the changes that have happened in our lives, perhaps the challenges too that we've faced, the difficulties in finding work or retaining work, perhaps the challenges of looking after children at home or worried about family we couldn't see. And as we come into 2021, there is obviously the hope of the vaccinations being rolled out. But also, of course, many of us have been moved into Tier 4 or Tier 3. Um, here in Herefordshire, we're in Tier 3 now. And so again, things are unsettled, changing. And we want to find something upon which to base our lives, don't we? And so we come in prayer before our God, who is our rock and our support. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. The Magi came from the East to worship your Son. Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. We pray for all those brothers of our brothers and sisters in different cultures, places, in different languages and, uh, and spaces as they worship today. We pray for those Christians who can't go to church, perhaps because they risk uh, being infected or they're too frail. And we pray for them also to have a sense of belonging to the community of God, the family of God, which stretches across the generations and space and time. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds at the beginning of this year. Lord God, you've given each of us talents and gifts that we are to use. And we can use them selfishly or for the benefit of our community, our families, our friends, our world. So we ask that we will be generous in all that we do. In sharing the gifts and time that we've got the talents that we have, that all around us may know that you have blessed us and in our sharing of the blessing, we continue to bless them. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Father, grant an abundance of peace to your world. Particularly we pray, don't we, for all those places caught up in civil conflict, for Syria and Lebanon, for Sudan and southern Sudan, for Ethiopia, places that have got pushed off the news because of Covid, yet still the suffering goes on. We pray for all of those people and for our worldwide response of peace. It's very easy to become cynical, Lord, about politics. But we pray that your divine love will inspire a new generation of leaders to work for the benefit of all people and to help look after this creation of which you've made us stewards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer. Particularly we pray at this time for those whose jobs are uncertain, those seeking employment, those worried about money, those who found themselves in debt over Christmas. We pray for Citizens' advice and Christians against poverty and for all those who are working to help people to restore a sense of balance to their lives. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our neighbours, our families and this community of which we are a part. We pray for the networks to which we belong, to the family groupings and wider communities, particularly at this difficult time when it's hard to maintain contact. 
And we pray too for those who are struggling in our communities, for those who are poorly, those who are ill, those who grieve. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in the fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all the faithful departed. In your unfailing love for us and all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for this Feast of the Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so to our closing um, Epiphany Carol today, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, words by James Montgomery, and the tune is Kruger. Hail to the Lord's Anointed, great David's greatest son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun.
and so to our closing blessing. Christ the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for sharing our worship with us today. Uh, do stay safe. I know particularly um, if you're in Tier 4 um, and with the new strain of COVID around, it's a very um, uncertain time. Do stay safe. Look after one another. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.